fantastic new new screen uh new curtain that came up so smoothly i'm so impressed good job production uh my name is john uh, i'm back behind the desk poorly lit ready to misinform and this is uh warhammer 40k's only late night show for some reason grim after dark um no one wants to see just me. Let's invite my co-host in here. First up is my good friend, bringing a wealth of knowledge and a healthy chuckle to the game. That's Danny McDevitt. John, that was so nice. Danny, stop. No, it's... Dude, we have the smoothest curtains on this show. Fair. And then uh, let's bring in our other co-host. The one, the only. He's first in our hearts and second to square based. It's about half a finger. It's me. It's me. It's me. Hi everyone, how are you? Hi Val, doing good. Hello, doing good. how are you? How's everyone? Okay. Oh, and Dickie's here too. Hey, I guess hey. I never introduced you, but you yeah. are. Oh yeah, hi Dickie. No. Yeah, Techmy's Dickie. I just want a sh- big shout out to Techmy's Dickie's new computer, meaning yeah. that he oh. he could probably appear as the tech priest with an animated background and play Diablo at the same time. Yeah, mm-hmm. Only seven percent of my computer is yeah. being used by OBS and uh, the show. Yeah, fifty percent is used by Diablo Four. Yeah. And I was going to say that a similar amount of his brain capacity. Am I right? <laughs> hey. Got him. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah, I deserve that. Yeah. yeah. It's, guys, it's been a big week in 40K, and we're going to start things off with a question, Danny, you asked in our Discord here, uh, pulling up our first little slidey boy. Uh, all the data sheets for the Leviathan uh, units came out today. Oh, yeah. uh, for the Tyranids and the Space Marines. Danny, you asked the question, what units are your favorites and which ones are you pretty mad about? I'm most excited about the Psychophage. Um, I think his rules are really cool. Um, he is a buffing piece that's also a little bit of a hitter. And assuming he doesn't cost like a million points, I think his toughness is just annoying enough to uh, to be really good on the table. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty hype about him. I am very hype about the Apothecary. I like that oh, yeah, he's cool. is literally no healing at all in his rule set. <laughs> he's all <laughs> hurting. His healing is making other people hurt more. Uh, it's truly the violence is the only answer. Uh, and the only the only cure for wounds is a little bit of rat a tat tat. But overall, I think over pretty good data sheets. Val, do you have a chance to look over them there? Uh, Peter the Falcon, uh, a friend of the show. Um, and, uh, and, and tech be sticky played a game of a uh, bootleg game of 10th mm-hmm. in this very casita, uh, this weekend. Yep. And, um, I was flaccid all the way through guys. Uh, nothing got me going, <laughs> nothing wow. got me going at all. So, uh, I don't know, maybe some good PDF layouts might, maybe, maybe might turn the corner. Okay. Dude. All right. You're just like, you know, I'm not excited for the game, but I do like a good uh, PDF layout. So. Yeah. yeah. Phil, what kind of resolution are we are we trying to get here? Well, like, what, what, what are we trying to get you up to? You know, uh, excited. You know, maybe a Cialis moment of some kind. Okay. Uh, you know, I will say, you need orc you stuff would. if you're going to get excited. Yeah. That's the thing. It that's would help. The, Although, actually, you know what? I have a, bu- I have a, I've got a pretty good bucket of, of, of Marines also. So, like, you know, maybe, uh, maybe reading about Marines might, might be nice. It is pretty hard to get super excited when we have like a third of the triangle of fun. So we have like a data sheet. Don't really know the rules. Yeah. Like, yeah. Don't really know the points, and it just kind of is like, well, this looks good. But again, I'm excited about my little like punch apothecary. Uh, yeah. But it was like 300 points. No. I also don't know that, like, if, uh, if, like, I'm just, I think in the, the, in the course of ninth edition, like, the tables just became, uh, like, one endless ruin. Like, it was just like, so, like, they were playing on a table, it was just clogged, yeah. clogged with so many ruins. And, uh, and it just, what just didn't look all that stimulated me. Now, this, now this behind me right here. <laughs> I mean, we got, we got some, we got some square based action going on. Nice open field, couple tastefully placed buildings. <laughs> this now, this my friends, a six by four mat unmarred by painter's tape. I'm perhaps spoiled by my my current obsession. So I, I'm open. I remain open. Mm. I remain uh, uh, on track to play at an RTT on the twenty fourth. Get a free uh, wound dial, but uh, but you know I'm not. Oh uh, yeah, free wound dial. Yeah, the free it's wound dial. Free. I mean that's why I'm going. Uh, you know that, that's need, why you're going. That's why I'm going. I need that wound dial. Bitches love free wounds. <laughs> yeah, count count some wounds on the face. There's a lot of I, wounds on Tamercon. Tamercan. Tamercon. Oh yeah. Oh. 
Great, terrible, Did you bring shitty him lizard to a game. Yeah, actually, that's uh, what's the uh, what's the big lizard for for lizard men? The Mastodon? No, is it? It started with no the, the uh, the Dread Saurian. Oh, yes, the Dread Saurian. That's Pete's Dread Saurian. He uh, he couldn't pack it back in his bag because he has to take some trophies back for Falcon. Ha <laughs> ha, sucker! So I have, <laughs> oh. I have I have his Dread Saurian, and behind him, turning tail because he got his ass kicked by the Dread Saurian is uh yeah, that can's uh dragon no toad dragon anyway i derailed this conversation about 10th edition just to say that not feeling it yet guys but i'm getting yeah. there i'm trying i'm still oh, in the game right. danny we were we were talking about this the other day how we just have absolutely zero desire for 9th edition 40k i know this isn't a games played podcast <laughs> um <laughs> but you played on a tournament on saturday i well all right i hesitate to call it a tournament i would say yeah. it was more of an event um oh i'm so, sorry mr legal expert <laughs> well i mean but like okay the the winner at the end is drawn by a drawing like there's a drawing for who gets a prize at the end of it and then there's a prize for best painted and a prize they had for best vehicle so naturally i took no vehicles in my army and uh i headed down to the store um yep, yep. and uh beforehand i'm like oh you know what it's a it's around 11 o'clock i should eat some lunch before i play tournament starts at noon according to this application on my phone very excited starts at uh, noon that's quite leisurely yeah. it's a noon to nine event. it's an evening affair oh wow. shit okay all right um anyway so <laughs> you would know that about alaska gts and rtts if you ever let if us you let us games. yeah <laughs> yeah val <laughs> guys i i'm i no longer creatively direct anything there's no style guide it's out the window guys you can you can do games play wow. all you want yeah, John, out. what do you think throwing about that? Style guide. Yeah. About what? About having no style guide that's like directionless. We're like a ship without a sail in a Buddy, storm. If anyone's <laughs> listened to us for the last two years, there's there. there's yeah. never okay. any direction. Nothing yeah, yeah. Changed. Like for the last seven years, John. I just like, don't have a, I just don't have a <laughs> I mean, crop holder beside fair. me anymore because like it doesn't make sense that we would use the it's FLGN style guide. Still in your wife's closet. <laughs> She's just it, like it gonna be going looking for a looking for a nice outfit, and she's like, "What the fuck's the FLG and style guide? Why is this in Why here? is this just full of blank pieces of paper?" <laughs> Accurate. Yeah. Accurate. Anyways, so I go to eat some Thai food. I have this great lunch. Uh -oh. um, I have my favorite curry. Someone's getting um, sweepy. Yep. So I uh, I head over to the event, and uh, everyone is playing, <laughs> and they've been playing for over an hour at this point. <laughs> Apparently the event starts at uh, eleven, and my uh, my phone's Facebook settings was still set to Pacific time and not Alaska oh, time. Yeah. So I was an hour off. still in Idaho. Yeah, uh, Idaho uh, mentally, uh, Alaska physically. Anyway, so uh, so I get the buy the first round because they still let me join, um, which is great. So I just uh, sit there and I shoot the shit with the TO. Have a good have a good couple hour break. I will say that is a pro gamer tip is to guarantee a win in your first round. Just arrive an hour late to the event <laughs> for a first round buy. Uh, that's you, called you know, a, that's that, a members we're, bounce. That is a members yeah. bounce. Look, guys, uh, you know we're giving this to you for free today. This is some real coaching advice um, that you can take with you to the bank. And that's the kind of coaching advice that you'd expect from a podcast with laurels like ours. Mm -hmm. um, Not rest of uh, No. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so I play my first game. Uh, I play a great guy. He's played two games of ninth edition, and we're both playing Dark Angels. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I got to kind of like walk him through the game. It was it was really fun. Uh, really nice guy. Uh, had a good game. Uh, the Did lion. You he didn't how to stand in the corner on your objective. The the lion definitely repented a bunch of fall on that day. So um, how many how many like stinky reflux Thai food burps uh, were suppressed in the course of uh, the first matchup? Well, from me or from him? Because, like, from you. me all the time, like, <laughs> at least eight. Um, were, you, were you kind of doing the side of the mouth exhale while while, while hunkering over a codex over <laughs> rules rules disputes here? I try and uh, I try and do it through my nose um, so I get the but bouquet you're taller than everybody. You're taller, than, you're taller than everybody. Yeah, That's the just nose like... is like a filter. It's filtered. It's you go through the sinuses. The smell is dissipated. It's very <laughs> hard to detect. You have to have like a rancid hot dog burp, I think, to really get through all the sinuses <laughs> if you burp through your nose. I'm just saying. 
anyway <laughs> interesting interesting strategy all right okay um oh but val i had duck curry it's so good i mm. I, can't, I can't even it, it's it was amazing anyway so i'm i'm full up on duck curry and victory after my second game and uh, uh a person who's played exactly two games of warhammer yeah so we we talked about it, and I gave him some tips and strategies and stuff like that. Hates um, Dark Angels, but loves you. Duck Curry now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let him have a taste. Anyway, so uh, third game, uh, I play against Orcs. Um, this gentleman is like just his name is Colin. He's just an absolute champion. He's got like fifteen killer cans. Okay. Uh, a, a Morkanot, a Death Dread, a Big Mech with a custom force field, and some Grots. Like Good that's question. the whole. List. How is he 2-0 yeah. at this point exactly? How is this possible? How is he undefeated? Bro, because pairings are completely random. Like, it's not a tournament. It's just an event. It was an event. It was an event. It was an yeah. event. Got it. Okay. Yeah, cool, cool, right. cool. All right. And keep in mind, I'm playing all Primaris foot Dark Angels with the Lion. So I have like 30 models. Okay. Um, so Colin proceeds to have maybe the best game of Dice from Lane I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, it was insane. Like, okay. <laughs> second turn i get charged by a bunch of stuff which is fine but like anytime he's got to roll fours if he's got to roll eight dice he's getting seven hits if he's got to roll uh like 12 dice he's getting 10 hits it's wild hot handed uh, dice game baby dude uh the the morkin the the mork or the yeah morkinot not the gorkinot the morkinot comes in squishes the lion what oh like just dead <laughs> <laughs> surely that's not possible it just takes two failed saves Val, and i failed three out of four so uh yeah anyway has the, uh, i don't think the morganauts data sheet has changed since eighth edition indexes i feel like it is the exact same thing it's been it is the morganaut is what the morganaut is yeah there's no surprise to me i, I feel like i maybe should have lived anyway <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm having I punch this and shoot this thing down with heavy intercessors in close combat until finally I kill it uh, with Lazarus. Guess what happens? That bitch explodes over my entire army and does over thirty more <laughs> wounds to my oh. models. <laughs> oh. So like. <laughs> He's taking out characters. He's taking out squads. Like I have like eight models left uh, at like after at the at the uh, end of turn three, and I'm like, well, uh, this is going to be an interesting game. Let's see if I can maybe claw this back through some bullshit. And uh, yeah, I did do that. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, it's the McDivitt um, special. Yeah, you did. You did uh, manage to pull it back. Yeah, I you know I played. I concentrated on playing the game. Uh, I played real gagey. <laughs> And uh, uh, just uh, yeah, I clawed it back, but it was a it was a seven victory point to six victory point uh, win for me, so really close. Ooh. Amazing, uh, but yeah, ninth sucks. Uh, bring on tenth, I think is the. Yeah, I'm so done, man. Like at yeah. the end of that, I was just I was so done. I, I just got like a GT tired. and a major to squeeze in before the end, but like I after that, I am finished. <laughs> it's like an abusive yeah. spouse. <laughs> This right. one, guys, here. Uh, this one, I'm a little late on this one. This one is from last year, okay. uh, June 2022. Uh -huh. It's a post from Warhammer Community. It says, it's been 10,000 years. The Kratos Heavy Assault Tank comes to Warhammer 40,000. Download the rules here. H Danny, Val, what, is, what do you think is the best 10th edition list for the Kratos? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be at a legacy uh, tournament only, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um uh, but probably a ninth edition list would be the best 10th edition list for the Kratos. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, Danny, what about how balanced will the Kratos be in 10th? Uh, extremely. Extremely. Uh, it won't be better than any of the other choices from Forge World. No, I don't think you're <laughs> going to see much of it on the table. Um, but when you do, you know, you got to really watch out for it. Um, is there a model that you guys are super excited for, for, for bringing in 10th edition or seeing what it's going to be in 10th edition? Oh, oh! I know what yours is already, Val. Well, yeah, it's the Stampa. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm very curious to see what happens with the Stampa. I'm mostly right now. I'm curious about points because I've seen mm. some leaked points on uh, on some of the York stuff. So I'm very uh -huh. curious to see about points because the truck is very, very cheap. It's more how, cheap. Ma how much is the Stampa? This is what I do not know. Oh, mm. you not fair, know. Fair, fair, fair. It's fair. Will you see a sub six hundred point Stampa? That's what I want to know. 
possibly. I don't I've think gotten, so. Like, all my favorite characters already revealed, almost. Almost. Um, yeah, I can't think of one that I really, really want to see yet. Uh, I, I guess I want to see some data sheets. If I want to see a data sheet, like not something, not not like a character, I guess, or because those are my, like my favorite things in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I guess I want to see. Oh, I know what it is. How could I forget? It's the Turvagon, guys. The Turvagon is the coolest oh, yeah. Tyranid kit, and I've and I've been hounding for this thing like all day, Bane, uh, like a hound. Uh, for someone he's got a, he's got a tilf a sweet tilf mama turvagon bud sweet mama turvagon uh yeah you know, she's great i i right. i hope i hope i hope the addition treats treats her well we'll see she's uh, had a tough time she's you know, really, you know up and down we'll People, the, yeah the next slide here though uh because turvagon has been great but danny i need you oh, in, your, in a way only that you can uh to describe what we're seeing here right. uh, val this might be similar to you from your fantasy days <laughs> <laughs> Um, so what we have here is a picture of uh, a parking lot, and in the parking lot, uh, the the kind of the focus of the picture is on what appears to be a burning model. Now, the way and the color that the flames are kind of a bright white to to yellow to orange uh, with red just on the tips um, is indicative of burning Forge Road resin, <laughs> and. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that because at the end of fantasy, I watched somebody do that to their entire dark elf army. And based on context of uh, kind of the shape of this model and the size of the base that it's on, uh, I would guess that this is a, is this is a Leviathan dreadnought um, that someone mm. is really upset is gone. Mm. That's fair. Uh, and moving on to it, to the next one here, it does come out hot off the heels of the announcement from games workshop the legions and legends warhammer the horus heresy models and games of warhammer 40,000 uh gw put out a very upsetting article for me personally about how forge world models i'm going to make the distinction because there's no horus heresy models how forge world models will interact with the 10th edition of 40k um danny take us through how they're going to work uh, <laughs> you can't use them get out of here no more well specifically space marines and chaos space marines can't use anything <laughs> this is one of the most bizarre moments i think in my personal weird. games workshop history yeah yeah uh dickie we move forward like one more slide i have a list of things that are gone and this is where a lot of my problems come from um, so Leviathan, Contemptor, and Dara Deo Dreadnought's oh, gone. What a shame. That's cool. I understand you don't want to balance that, so even though I have those. a I have a beautifully converted Death Guard Dara Deo. I have two beautiful Death Guard Contemptor Dreadnoughts. Fine. Understand it totally. Mm-hmm. Also, the aforementioned Kratos, the Sakaran and all its variants, the Spartan. Thanks for buying that off me last year, Pete. The Cerebrus <laughs> and the Typhon tanks are all gone. Um it said certain variants of the Land Raider, the Vindicator, and the Whirlwind. So I would imagine that um, Scorpius well, Scorpius is gone. Really, the, uh, la- the last bullet point is the one that is the most perplexing. Oh, so we're, we're getting there because yeah. that one is the one that pisses me off the most. <laughs> Xiphon Interceptors, Fire Raptors, Storm Eagles, and Stormbirds. Hey, absolutely. Can I Get point out something here? out, John, yeah. before you move yeah. on from this? So all of these choices before this are pretty much models that are getting that have a plastic kit right now from heresy that they've released in the last like year uh, in the last year yeah because heresy came out about this time last year yeah um or is going to release very soon mm-hmm. so he, like those yeah. are all kits that are available in every store available to every person that they could potentially buy and use for 40k right all right moving on uh, we have Legion support weapons, which, thanks, my quad cannons, I didn't want to use them anyway. <laughs> foul blades, foul key, foul shones of mastodons, thank you for, for getting rid of that the month before I was going to buy a mastodon for my, my Templars. <laughs> we have javelins, dreadnoughts, and deathstorm drop pods. Mm-hmm. Securia hopolites. Do you still buy a deathstorm drop pod? You That's can. Cool. It, wow. it, it's a 30k unit. Uh, it's a It's a conversion kit, I think. And also Terex pattern termites. Really glad that my oh. my, my two drew. Which oh. until now was, was like the most probably widely able to be used model maybe in the game. Like everyone could oh, use yeah. the fucking yeah. termite. Yeah. 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 Let's go oh. uh, to the part of the... So decimators. 
God First in lore appearing in M35, only 5,000 years after the Horus Heresy. One of the most OG Imperial Armor uh, units as well. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I, I, I have three on my painting desk right now that I was working on, and now mm -hmm. I just want to throw them in the trash. But yeah, first appearing M35, uh, Decimators, gone as a Horus Heresy unit. Greater Blight Drones, which I have three painted of in my case, gone as a Horus Heresy unit. Blood Slaughterers, gone as a her Greater Brass Scorpions. Greater ba Brass Scorpions, by the way, on my painting desk right now that I'm working yeah. on. I sent Dicky <laughs> pictures to say how great it was looking. Yeah. Um, Greater Brass Scorpions first appeared in lore M41. Only 11,000 years after the Horus Heresy. Yeah. Uh, the Charybdis Assault Claw, which is in my case, and the Drag Claw Drop. Well, actually, the Drag Claw do uh, Drop Claw can go away, so people can what? stop just turning the fins upside down on their, no, their Drop Claws and making shitty. I agree with that, actually. I do. <laughs> I, can, I can just die. That's uh, worth the you, you missed the my heartbreak, which was, was the Chitin Ravager. <laughs> Uh, Chitin Ravager, I've, yeah. I've got two oh, that Chitins. Thing is so cool. I've so got if I... two Chitins. And so... It's so bad. So John really wanted to rattle off the in memoriam list here, uh, but yeah. I think we failed to even set up context for the reasoning behind these uh, these models being cut, as communicated on Warcom. Which the if GW I were dicks, which, <laughs> which hate my models, which fails the like scratch and sniffs test so immediately that like there is yeah. no logic here. Abandon all logic as we go down into this little rabbit hole because the 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 the, the the argument was that these are these are these are uh, models for horse heresy, and that they will not be actively balanced for tournament play. Therefore, they won't be legal. I believe there's still going to be some legacy data sheets for this, or is that not true? They're being legended, so they're going so to. They will have legend stuff. sheets. They will have legend sheets. It's just not going to be updated or balanced. Um, and yet, as John pointed out quite bitterly, uh, a number of these are not in any way, shape, or form horse heresy units, um, and. There are a number of units that inexplicably have been maintained in 40k, namely yeah. the Custodes Forge World line. And I'm not complaining about this; just I don't understand. Oh well, Custod we're going to get to that. There's, are there's, we? And, there's and, always an asterisk. Hey, I'd like to point this out too. Today, in the Space Marine reveal and the data sheet for the Terminator Captain, they list yeah. one of the units he can join as Relic Terminators which are Horus Heresy Terminators. Like, this is just, this reason just doesn't make any sense. No. What is going, Is are they okay? Is is Games Workshop okay? What here's, is happening? Why why these units? Why in this way? Why now? Like, it doesn't make any sense. So Decimators, uh, Blood Slaughterers, the Brass Scorpion, older kits, and I would imagine uh, Resin Molds don't do great, right? The Charybdis Assault Claw is a massive kit. Um, and then things like the Greater Blight Drone has almost been replaced by the Bloat Drone, uh, which is a similar like model into what it does. Um, so I can see that one going away. And I also understand that you have, I mean, fuck, the, the Space Marine book has 100 units to balance as it is without Forge World. So I get it. I really do. I just wish there was a little bit of honesty about why we were of these units because right now it's like we're getting rid of them because they're 30k models and i'm like literally i looked it up as soon as it happened the greater brass scorpion was not seen in the imperium until m4199 not a in guess, any way shape or form a heresy model yeah, yeah. as it's, a matter of fact yeah and they do not show up as warhammer like course are they even on the website anymore i'm gonna see this here they are still because they're heresy models right but i feel as disingenuous because if you buy a brass scorpion there's no rules for it in 30k. Uh, well, yeah. no, I'm currently looking at 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 their stuff. Uh, the brass scorpion is available only in the 40k section. It's not available in the horse area section. Impossible. It's a 30k. I unit. mean, that's what that model was always has always been designed for. Like the I mean, brass I get, scorpion. It, like this. Yeah, it was, was designed, designed for, for horse heresy. No, no, it was I designed think for it became war, right? Yeah, it's, uh, these uh, are not. These are not. This is what my point is: is they're literally not. No, horse heresy models like right. they're they as in not right. used in horse heresy. <laughs> the chaos ones absolutely are not because the demon engines didn't come along so much later because they didn't know the right way to like like join the souls to the, or the machine to the demon or, or whatever. But doesn't matter. It's 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 a crappy reason. Value hinted at custodes. Dick, you want to throw up the next slide here? Some did make the cut through. 
Um, so all Adeptus Custodes units from Forge World will be getting comp um, competitive rules going forward. Also, the Imperial Knight models from Forge World will also be getting comp rules going forward. Um, because they say uh, that these have been well maintained and taken care of and are actively used in the 41st millennium, unlike a Brass Scorpion, which was just around for a year uh, and then was like just disappeared suddenly like Poochie in The Simpsons. Um, I think some of this, I'm very bitter about this, by the way, but, um, I think some of this comes from the fact that the Imperial Knight, they have a brand new plastic, uh, Serastis kit coming out. Yeah. And I think they, the accountant was like, geez, how much did this cost to make this mold? Yeah, no, put that back in the game right no, now. No, 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 okay. no. So like people always skip, I just need to interrupt right now. Like people always skip to like economic arguments with these guys, but this is, this is, this is not, has, this has nothing to do with economics. I, uh, 100%. This has nothing to do with. What is right for the for the bottom line of Games Workshop, and not that I'm like a particular, like I'm not passionate about their 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 black ink or anything like that, but like no, there's something else amiss here because of the complete lack of any internal logic. Uh, yeah. you, if you want to, if if the if the motivation is to sell models, uh, yeah. then you obviously wouldn't want to restrict uh, opportunities to use those models. I think um, that seems to yeah. be a uh, a priori type logic if, there if it was up to me i would ask uh 40k head Stu black himself why all these went away but my head doesn't nod quite enough to to be able to get that interview um <laughs> <laughs> it's very unfortunate like i said in the grand scheme of things i understand why it happened i mostly agree with it happening i don't like the reasoning being given for it happening yeah. um and so hold on, and like, I, I still don't understand. Like the reasons that they give it that they've given are not understandable. Like no. there, there, there are no, there's the only reasons I can tell that they remove these these units from 40k. And by the way, not the major like massive titans either. Those some, for some reason have been spotlighted as having their own rules and will be balanced or whatever. Um, like there on. is there, there is no there is no reasoning for this. I think no. quite clearly, like it is, it is whatever is going on here is is known only unto like internal politics of Games Workshop, as far as I can tell. Like there, there does not seem to be there is no there is no logic in this in their explanation for it, and there's no logic in what they've chosen to make the cut or not make the cut because there are a large portion of cast models included in this in this chop down that are not horse heresy models. What they are all, what they are indeed all are. That didn't make any sense, but what they are, <laughs> what they are, is Forge World models. That is no. their commonality. But so are some of the ones yeah. that are still allowed in 40k. So go fuck. I don't understand. Specialist they have a, maybe, they had, maybe they had a draft. Maybe they had a draft. Maybe they they were like, okay, with specialist special studio versus core studio. Go, you guys are gonna pick all the models get to be picked on teams now. I like this. Uh, down voting people in chat says uh, other reason kale should suffer. <laughs> That's fine. It's been a while since I've had something to complain about. We got a pretty good codex, pretty good world leaders book. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about time we had something to bitch about. You know, he also makes a good point too here where the edition change is the best time to do this. So like yeah. doing this in the middle of an edition would probably go over even more poorly than this will. Yeah. Um, because at least it's kind of a blank slate that we're starting with. Whereas people buying stuff for the edition, like for the game they're currently playing to have that stuff be taken away is uh, I'm sure worse i think yeah um uh but like i don't know is is it are we looking at maybe like a downgrading on what they want to produce at forge world and so they just want to carte blanche like remove that from their from their operations in case that they decide to stop doing like specials games i guess that would make sense if all of the lines were removed you know, like that again. That logic would hold up if there was nothing left from you know Specialist Design Studio slash Forge World. Uh, you yeah. know, if there were no Titans, if there were no Custodies, if there were you know if there were no Knights, um, if there were no a bunch of other Xeno stuff that's still alive. The Garg Squig's still going. Like all kinds yeah, of Imperial Armor units on the uh, Eldar and Orc side. Tau, yeah. like some of the most busted ass, old, out of date Tau sculpts are still going strong. Do you, do you um, think it's a balance thing? That's true. Notoriously, uh, Forge World stuff has been hard to balance for GW. So, do you think that's just a, a straight up balance issue? I do. No. I mean, if it was if it was because they were afraid of like trying to have too many data sheets to balance, yeah. 
I think that that's a bad argument though, because they're keep expanding ranges with new units. Like there's six new units in or eight new units in the new Leviathan starter. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But I, I think so like for me looking at it, like there's a lot of the, the corn specific units in there that, that are 30 K units, <laughs> maybe trying to get those to balance with the world eaters rules didn't work like at all okay. or, or kind of sure, made maybe. something busted right maybe it worked with chaos space marines but maybe didn't work for world eaters and you can't necessarily take that out of the 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 corn chaos units and maybe the bloat drones i like, gave too many speed options to to, to, to death Guard. you know what i'm saying so i'm think i don't think there was a very deep thought or conversation about it but i mm -hmm. think they were just like what if we just don't do them I'm like cool sounds good but it's but these are all things that will have rules. They've already stated that they have rules. What they're not going to do is they're not going to like update or maintain or balance those those points and rules. Right. Again, right. this smells like like whatever the reasoning they're providing again is not the reason why they did this. Full stop. Because yeah. it doesn't yeah. make any fucking sense. I yeah, mean, serious. if we if we go and look at if we go like maybe when the dust settles and I actually I legitimately can't wait to have all of the data slates in a way that we can have them listed and sortable. There's a lot of like cool, like sort of macro analysis I'd love to do on 10th edition. Oh, um, sure. Just like nerding out on a spreadsheet. And one of them might just be, maybe maybe when the dust settles, we'll come to find out that both Chaos, Space Marines, and uh, Space Marines uh, regular have like exactly 100 data slates. You know, it might just be something as dumb as that. They're like, we're going to get these bastards down. We're going to get them down to like some arbitrary cap. But I would bet that as a matter of fact, uh, when you when the dust settles and it's compared edition over edition, um, you you'll just they're just arbitrarily deleted things from from the game for yeah. whatever reason. Yeah, that's, I mean, true. that's fine. It's fine with me. Yeah, I, uh, I'm I'm all for simplification, but like also like there's some units, especially in chaos, that they've removed that they don't have access to in other ways. You know what I mean? Like specific, specifically like the 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 assault claw and yeah, like the drop pod's gone. Yeah. The drop pod, mm -hmm. like that's 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 yeah. a real bummer. You know? Yeah, so, that, I, know. That, I, I hear you there. Yeah. Uh, moving on, we're going to go something less serious here. Dickie, I'm going to do a drum roll here uh, oh. to see, just really build up, because uh, this is very important competitive uh, stuff we have to follow up on here. Uh, but we're going to... Excess gooch grease is causing some men to use maxi pads. But Danny, what is gooch grease exactly? <laughs> what indeed um i we went I, pretty serious I, for the last section and i figured we would so yeah. I this feels this way here. more serious to me uh, really yeah i yeah, I, 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 I feel yeah, like i'm being you know seen what, i'm offended that you have to ask me that and i'm not are gonna you answer guys, are you guys sufferers of gooch grease I mean, you know things can get swampy in the in the, yeah, in, the, sure. in, the in the dead of summer. I'm sure you know even in the northern climes in which we inhibit. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I've never had to um, use something designed specifically for absorbing liquid. Um, you know, I don't have to pour sawdust down my pants to deal nope. with it either. Um, so right. that's good. I don't understand I don't why why you know the, the there is a product for this and it's known as Gold Bond medicated nut powder. And it's on the tin. It says medicated nut powder. And why I, you don't need you don't need maxi pads and is a that, powder. Is that is that what it says on the tin? Well, I'm pretty sure. I've never looked at it closely. It's in cursive, but I'm pretty sure it says it's for your for your nuts. Uh -huh. Perfect. Well, we're gonna move on to this uh, next. Uh, it's been a while since we've had tabletop inquirer uh, on the show, uh, so I found oh. this amazing. Yeah, I missed that. That invitation's uh, still open. Which is yeah, yeah, which, no kidding. He would be great. Very funny guy. I would assume guy. It's just the demo. I'm sorry if I'm offensive, but it says <laughs> guy is hyper elitist and condescending about hobby, yet suggests apple bees for dinner. <laughs> uh, which I think is a situation we've all been in. So what I want to do is we want to talk about some of our best pre-tournament, uh, during tournament, and post-tournament food places uh, and recommendations. Uh -oh. I was. I just have to put a quick addendum here. I think this could only improved if he had said uh outback steakhouse because that's my that's that is my oh, personal that's way worse i please, usually please applebee's someone... also terrible tg tgif i'm sure right, yes, also yeah. a good op option but cheesecake uh, factory love it if someone took a uh, camillary to outback and be like what do you think yeah, right? it was awesome it's like Australian it was steak, awesome right? when we did it we um, did it in charity hammer 
the one year, the first year I went. <laughs> Adam Gamble to Outback out, Steakhouse. But, yeah, of course we did. How, how so disgusted much. was he with the experience, so or happy. how polite was he about Bro. it? <laughs> as far as as far as interstate restaurant options go, and if I had to tier, if I had to tier list it, I would put yeah. Outback probably somewhere at the top of that tier list. Um, yeah. It's it's probably my number one choice. I don't know about you guys. Um, uh, I'd rather eat a Chili's. Chili's, yeah. okay. My my friend and I, after a recent tournament, we did Olive Garden. That was weird. Oh damn! Uh, I don't think I would do that. Oh, again. that is weird, dude. Yeah, that's a dusty choice. <laughs> that, that, what was what was I that feel burger like, place? That I feel like that's there? a place with very heavily laminated menus that have not been changed in some time. Yeah, Val, what was that know. burger place we went to in uh, San Francisco at BIO? Do you remember? Uh, in and out. In and out. Yeah, that was delicious. Oh yeah, yeah, that'd be a good choice. Yeah, but that's not, that's not like a rat. That's not that is that is an interstate cuisine. That is just that's just fast food. I'm talking yeah. about like mm. interstate sit down restaurant staples in the South. You might have Shoney's as an option, for an example, oh, or God. or the Cracker Barrel. Um, now, there are some truly truly terrifying mm-hmm. options out there in America. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so you're, you're saying, Danny, for breakfast. Oh, yeah. John and I uh, are frequenters often of uh, Red Robin uh, after tournaments. We yes. Quite often we'll go yeah. there. Red yeah, Robin's a, pretty good. Good, good chicken. Yeah. When we're out in the valley. Uh, yeah. And then, yeah, there's a right outside a local game store. The Pizza Hut, hut shut down and the restaurant shuts at 1 p.m., which is past our lunch break time because we do night games, as we've established earlier. Because we start at <laughs> we start <laughs> leisurely <laughs> noon. <laughs> leisurely <laughs> noon. Uh, so we go well, for a Thai curry. It's light out until 1 a.m., so I think you're the, probably fine. The best part is going to a Thai, uh, a Thai restaurant and ordering chicken nuggets and a margarita. Uh, <laughs> oh. golden nuggets oh, baby. god he made me so fucking mad like we go to this it's a really this is the same place i got this duck curry at right oh, yeah. and it's right in the same parking lot as this game <laughs> store and we go and like john's like yeah you know what uh i think i'm gonna have a margarita and i'm like what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> like leave the room like you can have literally anything this is what you're choosing he's like yeah i, want a margarita. I could have and literally he's... anything he 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 saw how frustrated it made me, right? He saw what he was doing was making me angry, right? You fed him. And so yeah, it, yeah, oh yeah, it nourished his soul. And so what does he do when an order comes around? He's like, Yeah, I think I'm gonna get a little something. Can I order up the children's menu and get a plate of chicken nuggets? And they're like, Yeah, of course. And I'm just fuming in my seat. Like just i'm so upset like i don't know hey, oh. what, how embarrassing to get a children's item menu and and fucking chicken he is, nuggets. i mean i need to remind you occasionally of this danny but the man is from scotland that's true uh, and i will remind you, you could, it was 1 p.m on a tournament day so i was quite drunk at the time <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you do did he as boil the nuggets I, I assume that they were boiled nuggets they were they were actually fried in Danny's duck. Uh, oh, Ooh, very, <laughs> quite <delicious>. mega loathing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm pulling this 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 image back up here, uh, and guys are throwing in some great uh, comments in chat here. Uh, why not late night IHOP? I think you answered your own question, Tim DeGray. Uh, Nick Herding saying a Waffle House throwdown in Alaska. Yeah. We don't get Waffle House. We just if get, we had Waffle House, yeah, I would, would be, be there, there at the end of every tournament. Uh, and Sherman pointing out that Camilleri said he liked uh, Outback but hated Fosters, he which just Fosters. makes me think he's from Tanzania That's or right. Tasmania. Tasmania. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, New Zealand actually. Tanzania. <laughs> Tanzania. Drew, uh, but I love this picture Danny had last week so much. I brought it back. It's our, <laughs> He's great. It's, He's great. I love this ogre. <laughs> it's it's so hungry. It's our twenty. It's our twenty millimeter square based, which is older and not as good as the, the newer square based. Uh, but it's our fantasy question of the week, uh, okay. which is going to be somewhat related to forty k for you guys. I found uh-huh, this one okay. on Reddit. It's asking if you could add only one faction to forty k, vampire counts or Skaven, which would you add and why? No, no, no look, buzzer shot, Skaven. 100 percent the rude. Yeah. I I, I mean I can't even argue that. It's like what? it's just the answer. They were te- they were also teased in the third third ed rule book. I don't know if you guys remember that incredible mm-hmm. page with all the like the, run. the weird Zenos. The, 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 the weird Zenos, the Strid. Yeah, Skaven all the way. Mm-hmm. They're even a chaos faction. Now in no. the OS anyway. Yeah. 
<clears throat> Thanks, AOS. All right, and then on the flip side, which single war gear item would you bring into the old world from 40k? <laughs> a shield drone. Hey, <laughs> you dirty son of a gun. <laughs> oh, uh, a shock attack gun. Because there's like so many snotlings around. Like you That's could true. shoot hella snotlings. Yeah. Mm. I could just mount it on the front of the, the pump wagon. It's true. Perfect. It's also like it's like trans dimensional warping as well, right? So like I feel like yeah. I feel like different things could phase in and out because of your shock attack gun. There has to be a couple <laughs> like Grimgore Ironhide just like plops down in the middle of a like 40k battlefield. Like I because of a shock that'd be yeah, awesome. There's gonna be a couple snotlings who were shot through a shock attack gun who ended up in like the Empire. <sighs> Now there's a data sheet I want to see. Let's see what happened to the old shock attack gun. God we'll bless. See. We'll see. Oh, ran, yeah, that would be great. I ran list in eighth edition with three shock attack guns. That might have been peak Warhammer for me. Uh, I think my most was six. Did six? I do six? Any? I think it, I did I five or six in like six or seventh or something. Oh my god! Oh, that was in. Yeah, probably in seventh. In seventh, I did. Oh, maybe it was before six. that though. But there were six of them. They were yeah. all riding around in the Hout of a gargantuan squiggus, so you could <laughs> actually shoot them. <laughs> And they Amazing. could always shoot out, but there was one game where every roll was like double one. So I just teleported myself into <laughs> combat <laughs> with things that would like instigate me. And I'm like, you know, live by that the shock attack. Die by, by, by the shock attack. attack. Yeah. That's uh. what happens. <laughs> Dickie, you spoiled a little bit, but that's okay. Yeah, I'll forgive sorry, you. Sorry about that. After popular demand, <laughs> we're doing it again. We're doing it again. <laughs> okay. And thanks to popular demand by Val pointing out I didn't know the rules or watch the show at all. <laughs> <laughs> this I've week's this to you before. It took Val saying it to make you actually go look at what the rules for Price is Right are. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, yeah, Val shames me more. I just nod my head. <laughs> uh, but this is themed. This is all based around one set. Okay. Um, and this is all sold prices. So oh, great. Okay. All, that all right. Sold. We got reality here, too. We okay. Have reality right. in here. Okay. Okay. So, last week on Saturday, up for pre order uh, <laughs> is this next slide here uh, is the Death Guard Season 3 Space Marine Heroes. Oh, no. uh, okay. They were available for all of three minutes uh, uh -huh. for each of the pre order zones. I did pick myself up a set. Thank you very much. Nice. Okay. Um, and the entire set of seven models retails for $64 US. Okay. Which which is exactly one dollar less than uh than free shipping uh but you know when you get it in your cart and it's not and it's These not mother uh, French. Fingers, man. yeah <laughs> this was also Jeez. i think i believe one of the only ways to get uh the malignant playcaster the actual good one and the not the one that's yeah. pooping out of his hand in the u.s he was before a japan exclusive model you had to buy on ebay or from <laughs> nefarious people who were mad that forge world no longer like john's bitterness forge really weekend. coming through tonight yeah, gotta yeah, say this I, uh, is a bitter week <laughs> john i bought that i bought the paint set that he came in yeah and, and it was, was expensive uh, right yeah um it was like 65 bucks it was 65 bucks but we're gonna yeah. start this week uh with oh wow okay so this is new in box we are we're talking about new in box just so yeah we're like gonna go down next slide here out. next slide here uh this one okay. here so the first listing was sold on june 4th okay. uh a complete set of eight heroes with one duplicate uh was... which would be a random one uh brand okay. new how much did this set of eight models sell for on uh, eBay? Uh, uh. Was this bid or was this just straight up by this now? This is, I don't know. Not sure. Okay, I just, okay. I, I have the, the prices sold for. Okay, I'm going to go. Um, one cent. Someone's saying one cent in okay. chat. Kim Lord's in chat saying <laughs> Already one cent. In with a penny. Know. Okay, so I'm going. here, Kim. <laughs> I'm glad that I wasn't the only one I'm who going. didn't know the rules of the prices right. You have you can't do that yet. You're not playing this. <laughs> All right. So who goes first? Who goes first? We just go in go in order. Like go whoever. Yeah, whoever throw it out there. Speaks first. All right, I'll go first. Right, no, Gal, you go first the first time. I'll go first okay. the next time. Okay. All right. Sure, Very sure. gentlemanly. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna go two hundred and one dollars US. And and again, oh, no way. Because Val made me me look up the price uh, the rules. Uh, it's the closest without going over. Mm -hmm. I believe. Correct. Mm -hmm. So one hundred dollars. So one hundred dollars, Dicky, get on in this, or have you already oh, looked? Jesus no! Christ! No! Jesus! Oh my God! I did it! No! I knew it didn't cost two hundred bucks. One hundred and ninety-nine dollars. Never oh, asked Dicky questions. Was, what a thrilling! What a thrilling round! Wow! 
<laughs> Amazing. Damn, I was close, but oh well. Ah, geez. There, there, there's more to go. We're going to do this one here. See how uh, off by a dollar twenty nine. Oh, no, actually, we're not counting shipping. We're not counting give, shipping. Give him the chest plus shipping. It was thirty-one dollars shipping for this, which Damn. is also a ripoff. Oh, oh, shipping pushed it over, but yeah, we're just going for the price of the models, not the price of shipping here. I, Next up, a I, can't, I can't see. I can't. So what? So it's not one ninety nine seventy one. It was one ninety nine. So okay, all right. So I was a dollar and twenty nine cents off. Okay, thanks for the kudos. Cool. All right. We need a, no we problem. Need a point system for them. Yeah. Yeah. All we right. Do. So Danny's up one, one nil here. Okay. One nil to Danny. So the next model here, we can all try and forget the. Uh, we got to figure out some us. sort of forty k plinko so that we actually advance to another game after this. That's uh, fair. That's but fair. Anywho, no one saw the actual go. price of this last one, so we're good. Okay, we have cool. Claudius, which I love that as a name, but he is the Death Guard Plague Marine. He is a icon bearer, which actually no longer exists in the Death Guard mm. data sheets, and he was sold <laughs> December fifth. 2022 uh so how much do you think someone paid six months ago when this was just a japanese exclusive model for oh. a death guard plague marine icon bearer bearing in mind no one ever took death guard plague marine icon bearers <laughs> mm, 32 32 yeah 32 dollars okay I'm, I'm going 35 35 oh, come on <laughs> pull it up Thirty-eight ninety-seven. Oh! <laughs> All right, nice job, Val. Ah, Beautiful. Ah, it's a great model. I'm excited. I really hope that he has his own data sheet. If you hadn't gone so low, Danny, I would have guessed the moon. I would have gone just straight two hundred dollars <laughs> again. <laughs> uh, again, chat coming just in, letting us know everything that someone... on two hundred every time. <laughs> chat coming in, Leslie. Someone's pretending that's a play caster. Absolutely, that's a great. Yeah, point. that's true. Yeah, that is that is true. Oh, here we go. Technology coming in hot. You know, next up, what we have is uh, Death Guard Claudius again. Uh, but this guy here now pro painted. Oh, uh, interesting. So it has been pro painted. That picture there is a picture of the Claudius model. It was sold April 17th, 2023. It's had a slight bit of conversion work done. Um, thank you, Dickie, for that very uh, high tech uh, like that. scoring sheet. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, nice. How much are people paying for this pro painted one? Chad says add $200 in value. <laughs> I might not listen to that. I'm going $75. $75. Okay. Yeah. W one cent. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, would you like to answer in a way that doesn't make you a dick? <laughs> no, no. No. One cent is a valid answer, man. He thinks That's I went fair. too high. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, so the right answer the is. It's really good. Yeah. $66.93. Oh! Oh! You flew too close to the Fuck! sun, Val. Fuck, what can I man. Say? You can tell I spent a lot of time on eBay, fellas. Come on. I am buzzing right around. The, I am right around the rim here. I it's just got to pick up some slop. It's a pretty good paint yeah, job. 66 bucks isn't bad for a good 75 paint job. bucks, I'm man. Maybe I'm I thinking in Canadian too like much. Yeah, maybe you're thinking in Canada. That is Canada. Yeah. That's from Canada, though. So, oh, oh my it was God. Shipping You'd be Canada. right on the money, Val. Yeah. If it was yeah. Canadian. No, that's the uh, king. The king's on next the money. Next up. Next up, we have uh, the Malignant Playcast. There's more my heart can't take this. Oh, jeez. Uh, okay. This was the guy only available in Japan that uh, Danny had to buy a complete paint starter paint set for in order to get. Mm -hmm. That starter paint set retailed in Japan for about $100. Mm -hmm. Now, part of the new Warhammer range, part of the Death Guard Heroes, which is all sold out everywhere. Sold May 30th, 2023, uh, right about the time they announced that it would be up for pre-order this week. How much was the Death Guard Malignant Playcaster? $64. Okay, 64 Because of the irony. $65. Ooh. God, you Ooh. son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> the right answer is... Come on, come on, come on, come on. $125. Oh, nice. Why? <laughs> Why indeed? Yeah. Ridiculous. Wow. John, you just um, told a story with pictures. I did. Uh, so this one here, do you guys, it's perchance, all bitter. It's all very bitter. have any paper around you at all? Because this uh, is for all the marbles. Okay, Anything it's all tied up. Your... It's 2-2. Two, two. 
Anything uh, yeah, to, sure. to break? Yeah, 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 sure. I could probably arrange. Because this one here, you guys are going to write your answers down. Oh. Wait, and hold on. Show uh, them up. All right. Here, I'm going to use this. Just a second. All right. Uh, do I have a yeah. pen? Quality. That's a better question. We don't know. <laughs> because I, I, I want to make sure that this game is not decided. It's going to either end in an unsatisfying tie or. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Or go ahead. it's going to end I'm ready. the thing. So, our last model here is Scabbath, the Death Guard Flail Plague Marine. Yeah, oh, uh, he's so cool. Great looking model. Very excited to have him. He was sold May 28th, 2023. <laughs> Again, about the time that they announced that this set would be out for pre-order. Love the fact there's a little nurgling is one of the flails. He's just kind of hanging on. He just wants to have a good time. Mm-hmm. How much was this one model? Write your answers down. Hmm. Answers in. Okay, hold on. I'm writing right now. Some kind of music, some weight music, maybe. Oh, I can. There you go. Yeah. Good theme. It's good quality. Okay, I'm ready. All right. Okay. Guys, reveal your answers. I can't I read that. $60. And $60, $60.69 for Val. Nice. Quality, 60 and 69 I just want to thank you both for playing the ultimate winner tonight is <laughs> no one it was 4777 oh. <laughs> both losers but really what was what that's... was the what was the score how, how much was it it's 47 dollars <laughs> oh bucks. so we were both over yeah yeah wow yeah. i never considered that that could happen what an amazing <laughs> thing this is a fucking excellent episode see what happens when you play with the rules i mean that's great <laughs> we got uh, we got I, some youtube the youtube gold here buddy yeah guys i do have a Put very special book. tiebreaker round for you oh. guys though Just okay round, lightning round, round. we got a lightning round chat, uh, chat we're gonna let's ship to the, to the next slide here i have a very special thing oh. i call it falcons foreign rules corner so guys, okay. what I did is uh, I got a very good. I don't know if you know, but our good friend Peter the Falcon is uh-huh. uh, multilingual. I wouldn't say good friend, but yeah, okay. Uh, associate <laughs> of the show, tolerator of John <laughs> Peter the Falcon, uh, is very multilingual. Speaks uh-huh. a lot of languages. Yeah. So what I've had oh. him do is we read a Goonhammer article, and I had him read one of the paragraphs about a certain model from the new Leviathan set okay. in Chinese. And the, uh, simply, what I'm going to ask you guys to do. Tell me what model it is he's talking about. And again, here is our good friend, slight acquaintance, Peter the Falcon. Tasuoshi died to Kela Kedao Dan, he lean for Pao Fen be a she stand he stwelled. J Biao Ming, Wo Men Ji Ben Shang Shi Zai Gao, Duan La Shen Dong Shi, Ten K Neng Da Ji Xiang Dang Yu Jiu Qian D eight, Er twelve Shi Shin De nine, Zai Je Ge Hizi Li, Tade Yi Si Shi Tade Chang Zai Dui Fu Guan Ji and Mu Biao Shi Yong Yu and Bu Hui B three G Chai, Er Chi Ta Yu Bali Stu Strike Neng Li Lai Bang Ju, A Er Fa Guai Wu, Ruguo Tade Mu Biao Bu Shi Di Yu Yi Ban Li Liang De Dong Shi, Take Yi Jong Shin Gun Dong Ming Jong Juan, Z e de dong shi, ta huan yu yi gay tu de ji ben fang hu, wo men ren wei ji shi du yi ju ben ben jong, yong heng de ze ren de ti dai er ge dan wei bing mei yu chu xian. It was just a minute. It was a minute of a quality Goonhammer article from a friend's Goonhammer about the new Leviathan box. Um, if you guys don't get this, I do have a version in a different language um, <laughs> that is a little easier. But I wanted to give you guys the option. Peter Venner says, I am very high. What did I join to hear? That is Peter the Falcon talking simple Chinese. I'm going to go with Yao Ming. That's the only, those are the only words I heard that might have been in a unit. Yao Not Ming. Not a 40K unit. But very, lot, very tall center from the NBA in the early 2000s. So 
you're, you're asking me what units were they talking about? Yeah, what unit was uh, Peter one unit. Falcon talking about? Just, Just one, one unit. unit. One unit was being talked about. Uh, and it's from the Leviathan box? It sure is. Oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, Here, what I can do. Yeah, okay, hold on. No, I got it. It's the Neuro Tyrant. I'm going with that one. Uh, no. Uh, oh. Wrong. So this is for all the marbles. This is the easier Italian version. <laughs> do we just shout? Do we just blurt out if we know it? Blurt it out when you get it. All right. Okay. Uh, the Itali- Peter talking Italian is the funniest thing to me. <laughs> <laughs> is Glossimo. This is his native tongue. That is. That is. Yeah. I started in this one, but then it was like, oh, that's far too easy. But but here is the same text, but in Italian. Dando un'occhiata all'altro lato della scatola. Si sono alcuni insetti dall'aspetto massiccio che avanzano verso le linee dei marine e il Ballistus Dreadnought vi fornisce alcune grandi armi per cercare di fermarli. Oh. Questo modello è interessante. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was, how did you know it was whoa, whoa, a Ballistus whoa, whoa. Dreadnought? We both said, yeah, it's a 3-3 three, three tie. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Dickie. Thank you. Thank you. I think okay. that's fair. That's Beautiful. only what, what an outstanding uh, second episode of eBay braces, right, John? That, that was, was good great. work, sir. Good wow. What a Thanks. what a really bit! With you. Good, bit. A bit. good bit. Good bit. Good times. And really, just I just love how it was the foundation of bitterness over the fact that those are all limited edition scalp models that have since been released uh, you, and also you know immediately scalped. The the important thing is I got mine. <laughs> 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 um, I do want to pick up, bring up a couple things uh, before we head off for the day. If you haven't had a chance already, uh, Dickie produced just an amazing content. Uh, by the way, thanks to our friends at Games Workshop who sent us the Leviathan oh, yeah. box early. No uh, kidding. Thank thanks, you for guys. this amazing upside down rule book. Uh, it was being super cool, and Dickie made Here. an amazing Throw how to me, play John. video. Oh. <laughs> Are you not going to do it? Uh, an amazing... <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't i don't i didn't get the book this this is maybe the best moment in this entire show ever <laughs> but uh, dicky made an amazing how to play video definitely check that out uh team effort. it's team effort it was a team effort um but it's been described as i don't know how to read and this taught me how to play uh so <laughs> if you don't know how to read um have someone take you to that video so you warhammer 40k oh, instructions you. for people who can't read good <laughs> Yeah. And can want to do other stuff good too. <laughs> what is this? A game for ants? <laughs> That's why the Forge World went away. Um, uh, I, on the other hand, in my super salty state, uh, what, been watching the 10th edition content coming in. Uh, Adrian from Tabletop Titans was lucky enough to interview Stu Black, uh, head of uh, 40K. Um, and all I could see from the 16 minute video was a lot of head nodding. Nods, yeah. um, mm-hmm. So I just made a, a two minute super cut. Of uh, of all of the head nods from that video, which means I did the math, sixteen percent of that video was just them nodding heads at each other. Which is the kind of the, the kind of like statistics I love. Now I, I I'm an honest man. If I make fun of someone, I went into the Tabletop Titans Discord. Uh, they keep going to go down a couple of slides here, and I posted that video, and I'm like, hey, just want to preface, I, I really enjoyed the interview. I think you did a great job, um, and I posted that there. Zero responses, zero uh-huh. reacts, zero replies. Uh-huh. A meme uh, that we covered on the show three weeks ago um, <laughs> got eight separate reactions right underneath that. Uh, so, really, Amen. so John, what does that tell you statistically? <laughs> it tells me statistically that Crip Shadows here chat saying I posted it before you. <laughs> so it tells me I should spend more time in their Discord and maybe. Oh, oh, I got eleven got reactions. Eleven reactions. Wow, blew 11. the doors off, Johnny. Love the doors it. off amazing so yeah thank you for everyone who's just like already posted nerd um <laughs> but yeah definitely check out that it's a really good interview it's a great uh example of active listening. And a thumbs up wow wow That's maybe the most popular content we've ever produced uh yeah i don't even believe it's a thing uh but yeah some great stuff coming out in the, <laughs> ouch in the last week uh if we go down to uh, before we get out of here we have a specific question from for val oh uh, shoot down a couple more slides in the first red curtain slide it says question for val will we be seeing peaches anytime soon i mean uh points cost points cost notwithstanding 
Uh, we're going to find out. You might even see Buttercup if they're cheap enough. Whoa. Whoa. You heard it here first, folks. Peaches and Buttercup could come out. I mean, if they... Subs. I mean, like, if we're under... If we're under... I don't even know what it would take. Probably, like, sub 350 feels good for me. Sub 350. Give me sub 350, so will, big squig. You will never so see Peaches or Buttercup yeah. at all. <laughs> <laughs> I think... The last time they're ever mentioned again, they were I put to sleep. I feel like they were around there at the start of 8th. I think that's where I think that's where I think OG Peaches was somewhere around 300 375 points with with weapons. So, it was later that they got like jacked up to some stupid 400 plus point mark. Yeah, you so. know why? It's because of you. Yeah, it's it was me. Fault. Yeah, for what it, for what it did to Adam Bramwitz and, and Robute yeah. Guleman. Yeah. And everybody uh, loved him and you were the villain. <laughs> surely was. I also so it, uh, famously really well for you, pressured him to anything. vote vote me best sports leading me to inadvertently win that event uh fantastic there's nothing that says best sports being quite like you better fucking vote for me yo yo take this maple take this maple syrup and just put my name on the page okay do Damn, it, dude do it do it and you'll become really high up in a good paint company otherwise <laughs> a gutter uh, oh, anything so else you guys want to add in here before we sign up for the night no, uh, I'm excited about 10th. Yeah, it's happening. Um, I can't wait. I can't wait. Hopefully this week we'll see some more data sheets. That'd be yeah. great. The next um, couple of weeks, guys, he's, he's already real, playing Diablo at this point. Real light wait, on yeah, jokes. Light, yeah, uh, real up? high on 10th content. Yeah, I mean we're always real light on jokes, but but more so than, than usual. Right. Uh, 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 <laughs> keep the square base out there. That's all I got to say, folks. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we can't talk about that. Every Thursday. real and original. Yeah, yeah, the real. Thursday, yeah, we'll the be real. returning. We'll be re- returning the original Square Base podcast. Yeah, it's a must watch. Up. Yeah, it's a must watch. It's, it's going to uh, be good on, yeah. on this Thursday. It's, this yeah. Thursday. Gonna be so you're Square Base classic, right? We're the original, all caps. Oh, Square so Base you're like Age of Sigmar, and uh, he's like the old world. <laughs> <laughs> this is great, actually. Because it's uh, the original, right? Wait. What came can't before? Wait. Wait. Um, but anyway, that's all the time we've had. Thanks for joining us. Hope you've enjoyed our discussion, insights, and irreverent games. Um, oh. Remember to follow us. Uh, all of our information is at grimafterdark.com. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe. Leave a review. Even if it's shit, just five stars and say really bad. And until yeah, next thanks. time, stay safe, stay warhammered, and remember, it's pretty grim after dark. Decades later, yeah, he made yeah, a comeback, like like Mark Mark lending those lustrous lips in the 1980s to such bands as the Scorpions, Dividar. Guns N' Roses, Love you, and baby. Pat Benatar. Tanner Herbert. We got to get him back on the old show. Oh, yeah, yeah that'd be half good. Half century after his humble beginnings, he's, he's nice at guy. it again. This time, without a numbersome musical accompaniment, he'll have you wetting your whistle <laughs> and whistling along. Who's actually whistling? Who's his new album, just make this yeah. Whistles Disney. Is sure to be a hit He's with all generations. He's not like a great whistler, I would say. Order now and receive <laughs> a like bonus what album. Makes it, like it really Earl makes Earl Whistles like a solid two. A collection sure. of previously unreleased material of Earl's Just favorite songs the warbling of the, the whistling years. is one of my favorite things. On this bonus album, he demonstrates his newly mastered technique of inward <laughs> whistling. <laughs> uh, Order today on compact disc or double length cassette. All also right. available at fine retailers right. such as All right. Dickie, could you just CBS, leave this on for 12 hours like you do? <laughs> yeah, you, Earl you Whistles it. Disney. Your computer can Buy handle it, it today. Play Diablo at the same time. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> That's Good what night, you everybody. were going to do anyway. <laughs> yeah, I was going to do that anyway. Yeah, you're right.